guys 91 percent of you who watch this channel are not subscribed it will mean a lot to this channel if you subscribe and it enables the opportunity for this channel to have a reach where you can have access to reviewing filmmaking gear and software before you take the decision on purchasing them for now this channel is run by one person and that's myself we hope that one day we can put as much high quality videos as possible and not just once a week I aim is to reach 10,000 subscribers before the end of the year and we cannot achieve this without the help of you guys so without saying much please hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't heard Rode just announced a 400 dollar portable microphone called the Rode Wireless Pro this appears to be an answer to what the Rode Wireless Go to lacked and compared to the competition the Rode Wireless Pro promises a range of 260 meters 32-bit float audio and time code which is amazing also it ships with a charging case that facilitates high-speed transfer of recorded files through it we all know that having clean audio is a very important component of content creation as it influences the overall quality effectiveness and professionalism of the content and if for some reason your audio is not just right there is no way viewers would keep watching your content today i'm going to test all the microphones i own and I'll be comparing them for clarity, usability, the unique features, noise cancellation and more. The Max I own and will be testing are the Sennheiser MK416, Rode NTG2, the Lark Max from Holy Land, the DJI Mic, the Movo WMIC80, the Sennheiser EK100G3, an unbranded wireless mic and the Shure MV7X. To keep things fairly across the board, I will try my best to make sure that I keep all the mics being tested at the same distance away from my mouth. Another thing I would want to say is that the audio will not be processed during the test. The first thing we'll be doing is the distance and range test, which we will go outside for the studio to test. But before we do that, I would like to let you know that I sold the Sennheiser just after I'd done the range test, so it isn't available at the time of recording this indoor scene. Now onto the prices. As of today on Amazon US, the Sennheiser MK416 costs roughly $987, the Rode NTG to $269, the Movo although non discontinued did cost $169. The Sennheiser G3 goes for about $400 brand new. The Lark Max and DJ are around the same price costing $299. The Shure MV7X $179 and last but not the least the unbranded wireless mic costs roughly $30. Now to unique features, Sennheiser MK416 are Rode NTG2 are shotgun mics. They have a very narrow pickup range that extends far directly in front of the mic and blocks sound from all other directions. They're mostly used for filming in noisy environments as it excels in isolating sound like wind or plosives. Almost all on-camera microphones are shotgun mics. The Shure MV7X is a cardioid microphone. This pattern looks similar to a heart with a flat bottom and means the microphone captures all sound coming from the front and blocks out sound in the back. This is the most popular polar pattern because it is versatile and suitable for live performances. While the DJ and Lark Max implement an omnidirectional pickup pattern, meaning that they pick up sounds from all directions. These mics are suitable for quiet environments like studios. The Sennheiser G3 and Movo have no microphones, but work as a transmitter and receiver system just like the DJ and Lark Max. For connectivity and power, one unique difference between the 416 and NTG2 is that the NGT2 has a compartment where you can install a single 1.5 AA battery which is ideal for scenarios where the camera doesn't supply phantom power such as a DSL video camera or maybe a mobile phone while the MK416 only works with phantom power. The Sennheiser MK416, Rode NTG2 and Shure MV7X all require the use of an XLR cable to connect to your recording device while the Lackmus and DJI, Sennheiser G3, Movo all work by using wireless transmitter and receiver systems with the G3 and Movo requiring two AA batteries, the DJ and Lark mic use internal rechargeable batteries, while the unbranded mic uses the phone or iPad to power them. They also have a charging case to extend the battery life if you had longer shoots. That's for the Lark Max and the DJI. So let's go outside. So we're outdoors now. It wouldn't be fair if I have the Shaw MV7X, the Rode NTG2 and the Sennheiser MK416 for this test because they are not wireless mics. So the test we're doing now will just be to test the range of the wireless mics. Um, that's the Sennheiser G3, the DJI mic, the Lark mic from, um, from Holy Land and the unbranded wireless mic they have here. So all mics are connected via wired lavalier mics to, to their transmitters except the unbranded wireless mic. Um, so I'll be taking um, some steps backward, I'll be counting from 1 to 100 
and let's know which mic disconnects first or which mic doesn't disconnect. I assume the G3 from Sennheiser doesn't disconnect. I expect that would be the mic to outlast this the range here. But let's see which mic disconnects first. I'm recording to the Zoom H6. The, the unbranded mic, wireless mic, has no output via 3.5 millimeter cable. I have that connected to my iPhone. So come with me, let's go. Count one, 100, one, two, three, four, five. Is it windy? Um, and if it's windy, the good thing that the LAC Mac can do is that you can turn on ENC. So you can make one, two, three on the LAC Macs without the ENC turn on, which is the developmental noise counseling. This is a turn on. Any different mic check one, two, three. Mic check one, two, three. ENC is on. ENC is off. Mic check one, two, three. Does it cancel out the, uh, the wind noise? ENC is on once again, mic check one, two, three. ENC is off, mic check one, two, three. So, one, two, three. I believe you can hear me at this range. Probably the unbranded mic has disconnected. Probably not. Probably the, maybe the Movo has disconnected. Maybe not. So I'm still going, maybe the DJI has disconnected. I don't know. I'm probably at the length of a football field. And I hope all mics are still connected. So test is over. My wife who is behind the camera noticed that the unbranded wireless mic still held its ground. I walked over a football field, probably two football fields. And according to her, she could still see the waveform on the microphone. We'll find out when we get back to the studio. So let's get back to the studio where we do the clarity test. All these mics work wirelessly except for the Roadshow MV7X, NTG2 and Sennheiser MCOM416. Although you should be able to convert the NTG2 to a wireless system, if you're able to connect the mic itself to one of the wireless transmitters. Note that for the NTG2 to work, you would have to put a battery in it or it wouldn't work since you require phantom power without the battery. Best case would be either use the DJI or LACMAX due to their small profiles. In terms of usability, the Shure MV7X is most popularly used as a podcast mic and does not need phantom power. You can just connect it directly to a camera, computer or audio recorder. This is because it is a dynamic microphone. You most likely use a DEX or floor mic stand to hold it in place in front of the speaker as I have here. The NTG2 and MK416 are used mostly in film productions where they are used as overhead mics boomed across from a distance using a fish or boom pole placed slightly above the frame. And because of the very narrow pickup pattern, they fit nicely into this use case scenario. They can also be used for interviews where they are placed above the subject being interviewed. The G3, DJI, Movo, LACMAX and the unbranded wireless microphone are mostly used where the subject may need to move more freely or as backup to audio captured by the shotgun mics. They are mostly used in interview setups or movie sets where the mics are hidden. In this use case scenario where the mics are hidden, you will need to connect the body pack or transmitter closer to the subject's mouth using a wired live mic. Another use case scenario is at a music concert where the performer will use the receiver as a wireless monitoring feed. This will require earphones. Lastly, the DJI and large mass transmitters can be placed on the subject's clothing where its visibility is in a problem. For audio monitoring, as mentioned above, the Sennheiser G3 can be monitored by easily connecting earphones to the receiver end of the microphone, same as the Movo. Meanwhile, the large mass and DJI can be monitored by connecting to the receiver and also can be monitored on your camera equipment if we're connected there. This is different for the short MV7X, Sennheiser G3 and NTG2 and the unbranded mic, which will require monitoring via the audio equipment they are connected to. Unfortunately, you cannot monitor the unbranded mic by connecting to its receiver. You just have to rely on the recording you have. Now for the clarity test. As mentioned earlier on, I have tried to set all these microphones at the same distance from my mouth right in front of me. This is how the unbranded wireless microphone sounds. Testing mic 1, 2, 3. Testing mic 1, 2, 3. How does that sound? Now for the Sennheiser MK416. Testing mic 1, 2, 3. Testing mic 1, 2, 3, testing mic 1, 2, 3. For the NTG2, testing mic 1, 2, 3, testing mic 1, 2, 3. What do you think between the Rode NTG2 and the Sennheiser MK416? Now moving on to the Holy Land Lark Mark. Testing mic 1, 2, 3, testing mic 1, 2, 3. 
and to the DJI, testing mic 1, 2, 3, testing mic 1, 2, 3. Now to the Movo, testing mic 1, 2, 3, testing mic 1, 2, 3. Now for the Shure mic, testing mic 1, 2, 3, testing mic 1, 2, 3. Which mic do you think sounds best between the Rode NTG2 and the Sennheiser NK416, which is a shotgun mic, and the Holinan and DJI? The point of making this video was to give a sense of how these mics work, sound, and use case scenarios without boring you with technicalities. I will leave links in the description to all these mics so you can either buy them from Amazon or Aliexpress. Let me know in the description what you think about all these different mic types and I'll see you in the next one. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't. See you next time. Bye bye.